This is the IntelliGel Quadra and its expander. The Quadra gives you four function generators or envelope generators inspired by West Coast Synthesis as opposed to our dual ADSR which takes its cue from East Coast Synthesis. With each function generator you have controls for attack and decay, a switch to select between exponential and linear curves, and three modes, attack decay, attack sustain release, and cycle or LFO. At the bottom, you have your trigger inputs and envelope outputs. And feeding the input of the first function generator, I have the gate signal from a keyboard, and I'm taking the envelope output to control my VCA. I just have a single Dixie feeding the first channel of that VCA. So right now, function one is in exponential and attack decay mode. So when I hit a key, We'll be able to hear that oscillator. It doesn't matter how long I hold down that key because attack decay mode has no sustain. So in this case the timing is totally determined by the attack and decay controls. Exponential curves are great for snappy transients and relate more to the human perception of amplitude and frequency. Generally you should avoid using exponential curves with exponential VCAs because the results will become overly skewed. IntelliGel's micro and quad VCAs have knobs to sweep between linear and exponential responses. Linear mode works with both exponential and linear envelopes, but sometimes adding a touch of exponential can make things pop. As always, let your ears and taste be your guide. So for example, if I start an arpeggio now, and switch to linear, exponential. So next up you have attack sustain release and so in this mode holding down a key will make the function sustain and when you release the key it enters its decay phase. And so last up we have cycle mode where the shape and rate of the LFO are determined by the attack and decay times. take that envelope output and plug it into the VCA input. You can even use it as a noisy, unpredictable oscillator. So that's the Quadra. If you add the expander, you get a number of additional powerful features. Starting on the left here with the end of cycle outputs. What happens with these is when a function completes its decay phase, it sends a gate out of the end of cycle output. So you can see it light up after that. This can be used to cascade Quadra's envelopes or trigger other functions in your system. With cascading envelopes, their trigger rates become interrelated, which is fantastic for complicated evolving rhythms. So for example, I'm gonna take the output of a second Dixie and plug that into the second channel of my VCA, and I'm going to use the end of cycle of one to trigger number two, and I'm going to take the second envelope and plug that into my VCA here. So when I hit a key now, that second oscillator is being triggered by the second function generator. So next up you have inputs for the attack and decay times with knobs to control the amount of modulation sent to each. The attack input is normal to the decay input, so you can control them both separately or together. Just be aware that if you have something plugged into the attack input and you don't want to control your decay, make sure you turn your decay down. 
In fact, it's a good idea to start with these all the way down and then gradually bring them up to introduce the modulation. Because Quadra has such a wide range of attack and decay times, things can get pretty crazy pretty quickly. So for example, if I take envelope four and use that to control my attack and decay times, I'm gonna start with pretty fast attack and decay times and start that arpeggio again. you can even modulate four and get even more complexity. So by modulating your attack and decay times you can add a lot of life to a static sequence or arpeggio. Top two functions and bottom two functions are both paired in two separate ways. So the first way is the quadrature mode, and the second is the OR outputs at the bottom here. Quadrature mode means that you don't need a trigger input because the two functions trigger each other. What I'm going to do is reconnect the second envelope to control my VCA, which still has that oscillator. And so now if I turn on quadrature mode, and they're both set to attack decay mode, I'm going to set them both to linear. Quadrature mode creates an interdependency between the paired function generators where their attack and decay times determine each other's timing and re-triggering. This is great for creating out-of-phase modulation and can yield some complex results out of the OR outputs too. If the attack and decay times of two are short enough, it can even loop during the attack phase of one, which creates a periodically cycling effect. Check the manual for all the specific details on quadrature mode. So that's quadrature mode. The OR outputs send the maximum value of a function pair. So OR 1 and 2 on the left will send the maximum value between 1 and 2, and OR 3, 4 will send the maximum value between functions 3 and 4. And you can control the level of 2 and 3 using these attenuators here. So for example, if I take the OR 1 and 2 output, and use that to control the frequency modulation of my Dixie. I have this attenuator all the way down, so right now you're just hearing function one. And if I increase this amount, when one drops below the level of two, you hear two's LFO. So 2 is set to a faster rate, so we can get a blending of that modulation. And of course, because we have four functions that we can take advantage of with attack and decay inputs for modulation, I can make things even more complex. And because the Dixie and the Quadra are both completely analog, they'll respond very rapidly and smoothly to modulation changes. The Quadra really excels at setting up interdependent patches. For example, right now, I have the end of cycle outputs of each of the function generators triggering the following function generator. The end of cycle of one is triggering the second function, and the end of cycle two is triggering the third function, the third is triggering the fourth, and the fourth is triggering the first function generator, so they continually loop. And so if you change the timing of one, So 
So you can get some really interesting complex rhythms going there. So right now, that fourth end of cycle output is also triggering the sample and hold on the noise tools, which is feeding the pitches of all the Dixies and the shapeshifter that's generating the sounds. And the envelope outputs are triggering uh, the PCA, so the individual oscillators are playing one after another. The sample and hold output, uh, I'm using Shifty to distribute it, that is controlling the attack and decay times here with the expander. So we can bring up even more craziness here. And then you still have these OR outputs that you can take advantage of. So right now I'm using uh, the top pair to control the number of folds with the microfold here. And I'm using the bottom pair to just add some uh, modulation to the delay mod rate on Rainmaker here. So let's ease off on that modulation a bit. So that's just a quick overview of how Quadra works. And you can use it in so many different ways. So I'd love to hear what you guys are using Quadra for in your patches. I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.